blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Bishop with us again. You know, I always tell people that God sends the best to those who deserve it. <laughs> but I don't know what our excuse is, but it's a thrill to have him amongst us. I, I just I'm thrilled. It's just good to be back together. It seems a long time since December uh, we've been apart and we haven't got together. Uh, last year we were in Brazil by this time and we've gone to quite a few countries. This year uh, he's been in Africa and I've been in England oh, and America and one or two other places. But it's good to have him. So let's stand up and give him a real warm welcome. to hear that the choir just flew in from Brentwood tonight. 
thank God for all of you. And uh, Dr. Colin, I can thank God for your life, all you have done in England. Before the gospel became gospel in England, a man like Dr. Colin Eckert brought his neck out out of the Anglican mission to say, if I perish, I perish. And those who say, if I perish, I perish, never perish. Hallelujah. So we are glad to have you here tonight, sir. Please take your seat. When I saw His Lordship Bishop Reed this morning, at the Heathrow Airport, I couldn't know him anymore. It took me great time of introduction by Dr. Root to find out whom Bishop Reed is now because it's two years I saw him last. <laughs> and uh, last year we traveled and traveled until we got to the end of the earth. We had night and day separated in Fiji. And by the grace of God, that's not the end, we just began. I bring you greetings from home, from my wife, who will be meeting me in a few days. We just finished uh, great services, which she continued today till tomorrow, before she leaves to meet me on Sunday. And uh, I was giving testimony to Bishop Reed that last Sunday we had a little baptism, water baptism, of almost 1,600 people. And first time I escaped after preaching to them, I remember a few years ago we went for water baptism and 1,264 people were baptized one day and everybody wanted me to baptize them. When it got to this time, the Lord said, and he himself baptized not except his disciples. So I told the disciples to help me to do the baptism so I can live longer. So I'm glad that I was able to see that. But we are seeing great things at home, and uh, this year in particular, which the Lord told us, 1998 is going to be the year of unusual miracle. I have been searching the scriptures, and God is giving me new discoveries in the Bible, and as Dr. Collins said tonight, I hope someone is here to get a miracle. It may be a miracle of just knowing that you are a child of God. That's a very big miracle. You don't live in anxiety anymore. Maybe you had the miracle of just knowing that you are born again and you are sure of it. That's a miracle in itself. Yes, I've seen with my two eyes dead raised 14 times, lepers cleansed many times, deaf here many times. But the greatest miracle I have personally received is the miracle of contentment. I know that my God will supply all my needs. No matter where I am night and day, I believe in God that supplies, not only heals, not only delivers. I said to them in Benin yesterday morning, I said, you know, in the Bible, it was not difficult for people to see miracle when people believed that God was present with them. It is when God is not around. You hear that first time Bishop Lee said that about 12, 13 years ago. No miracle, no Jesus. People said he was bragging too much. And they tried to convert me to themselves. I said, no. If a man said, no, no miracle, no Jesus, try his Jesus if it's the truth. And later we found out that that Jesus has not changed. I said, what would you have done if you were the one that came to Jesus? Leprous. I said, go wash, you're okay. You'll be so angry. You mean you didn't pray for me? Go wash. They left. The Bible said, as they went, say that with me. They examined their bodies and saw they were cleansed. Dr. Colin, that's one message God gave me a revelation. You know how we blame the nine that they didn't come back? Jesus said, where are the nine? Were there not ten cleansed? He didn't say now because they didn't come back, they must have leprosy. Those people were so shocked that they were healed, they went home straight. You mean just go home means I'm healed? All right, he has asked me to go, go. So they went and went. But one came back and said, this is not how I was before I met you. All part of my body healed, 
And Jesus said, go, you are made whole. That one got two, the other one got one. Did you hear me? Sometimes we want to do it in the former traditional way. What is the traditional way? I was in one meeting last time, I saw everybody fall, so I must fall. That's tradition. I was in another meeting, I met people crying, so I have to cry. That's tradition. When God wants to do this, he can change his method anytime, but the power never change. Are you hearing me? I want to speak tonight on attitude. And what I believe has helped me in the last few weeks. Let's go to the book of Numbers. The book of Numbers, chapter 14. Beginning from verse 21. I will commend the Bible school class for Dr. Collins this night. Verse 21 of Numbers 14. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. As truly as I live, as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. God did not say as older as the world become, lepers shall feel everywhere. Death shall feel everywhere. But God is saying, as long as I'm alive, my glory shall fill the whole earth. Somebody ought to shout. Verse 22. Because all those men who have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, I have not hearkened to my voice or did not believe what I did. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But, say that to everybody. But. I didn't hear you. But. Try it again. But. Now say it in English way. My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and have followed me fully, him will I bring into the land wherein he went, and his seed shall possess it. Verse 28, say unto them, as truly as I live, says the Lord, as she has spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. Somebody should say amen. amen. I want to take verse 24 first. In the midst of all chaos, doubt and fears, recklessness and doubts, God said there's somebody in town who saw what 12 men saw? He was one of the 12. When he came back, he said, things are not as bad as you think. The land I went to see, maybe it is not the same land that the other 11 saw. I saw a land flowing with milk and honey. And Joshua said, the land I saw flowing with milk and honey. Ten men said, that's not what we saw. The land we saw is a land that eat the inhabitants. And they gave, the Bible called the ten reporters report, evil report. But two men said, we separate ourselves from their comments. You see, your attitude will determine your attitude. Your life hereafter will be determined. Not how much you earn, not how much you walk, but how much of God's character is exhibited in you. I have seen people take into meetings, lay dying. One of the most 
anointed men on earth can come and lay hand and say, in the name of Jesus, I command you to rise and walk. They lie and die. Not because the preacher was not anointed, but the man never left home to see healing. Attitude. I've seen many, many, many come to meetings where I preach sometimes. Never been to church, never. But carried at the point of death. And you get there and say, what are you here for? Sir, I want to be healed. When? Now. Why you are talking? Say, you, now, now means what? He said, now. Can you get up? Yes, sir. Before you finish speaking, they are standing. What happened? He left home believing if he can get there, he will be healed. And there are those you need screw and chisel. Hammer. Believe. Believe. No. Believe. No. And they die in their unbelief. Not because God has no power to heal, but they didn't come to be healed. They came to see if God can heal. And I want to let you know, God is saying, they saw my miracle. They saw my hand. They saw the mighty works I did. But they doubted what I did. Their hearts told them, it's a game. It's a joke. Many preachers still believe the same thing today. When they hear that somebody is healed, they say, Phew. no. In Africa, we don't fight whether men and women believe in God or not. Like I, I came to England some years ago, I heard a bishop say, Jesus was not born by Mary, and Jesus didn't die. And Jesus, I was shocked. That's not our problem in Africa. The problem is between darkness and light. <coughs> and everybody who is in the church in Africa have left one tradition or the other. God is saying here, these men followed me. They were in my midst. I saw them. They saw me. I performed miracles. I did Things that were shocking, but they refused to believe. Therefore, they will not see any other kind. However, in other words, but one man who believed, he had another spirit. Everybody in England may tell you how rough life is now, economically. This man is one of those who doesn't know whether there's hunger in England. Oh, you say he's a rich man. That's what he says. He doesn't wait for you to tell him. This man, if his head is cut now and put in a bowl, he will not believe he's dead. Calling Eckhart, he will not believe. Me, unless you tell me I'm dead, I will not know. <laughs> and if my eyes are open and you tell me I'm dead, I'm going to tell you I'm ready to bury you. Because I don't believe. Attitude, and not that spirit. As this world grows, Older and older and older. So much of God will be said in different form. Only those who believe in living God will see a living miracle. May I repeat? Everyone around you will say, things are very tough now in England. Only the man who said, my God is tougher. How? 
another attitude, another spirit. What is that spirit? The spirit that says, I know my Redeemer liveth. What is the spirit we are talking about tonight? The spirit that says, yes, I can see economy fall, but my God is still standing. Is anybody hearing me? But my servant, Caleb, had another spirit. He doesn't talk the way others talk. He doesn't do things the others do. Caleb said, I am 80. I am well able. Even though I'm 80, he said, I'm stronger now than when I was 40. Another spirit. Other people that are 65, that live in the same town with Caleb. How are you? Don't you know I'm 65? <laughs> Peter, are you all right? I think so. What's wrong? I'm 65. I got a letter from President Ora Robert. I made a copy for him today. On the 24th of January, Ora Robert turned 80 years. I sent him a greeting card. I sent him whatever I thought an old man needed. <laughs> he wrote me a letter. I had to give him a copy. He said, Benson, thank you for all your gifts. Now my ministry is about to start. Look out for me. He said, look out. He said, I have now reached the age where Moses started his ministry. Now you look out for me. Let me hear you say another spirit. Another spirit. Say it again. Another spirit. Oh, I would have said, now that I'm 80, just in case I die, meet me when we get there by and by. Here is a man of 80 saying, look out for me. My ministry is about to take off. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He was of another spirit. He is still of another spirit. What is that spirit? The spirit that says, my God has not changed. He's alive. He's the same. Yesterday, he's the same. Today, he's the same. Forever. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's the spirit that says, I'm well while I'm sick. The Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. The Bible says, let the poor say what? Let the poor say what? Let the weak say what? Are you hearing what I'm saying? It takes another spirit for you to say, I'm 80, look out for me. Are you hearing me? 1968 November. A car hit me on the street and been on top of a motorcycle. Lifted me and threw me to the other side. And I had broken bones in 10 places. They carried me to the hospital. And the doctor looked at me and said, Are you not the miracle worker, Benson? I said, Yes. He said, What are you doing here? I said, I came to see you. <laughs> he said, Do you know your bone is broken in 10 places? I said, No, his bone was not broken. He said, I'm talking of you, not he. I said, yes, that's what I'm telling you. My Bible says his bone was not broken. He said, you are going to be in this hospital for at least four months. I said, I'm leaving tomorrow. <laughs> he said, how are you going to do it? You're already here. I said, that's why I'm here. You touch it, God touch it, I get up. You are not hearing me. Hey. Ten places. They took me to the ward. Put a big cast. And people were rushing to the hospital to see whether the miracle worker was really lying down. <laughs> I 
And he wrote there, the day I will be discharged. Suddenly on the bed, in less than 30 minutes, they finished the cast with the date. I heard, you are healed. That was all I heard. I got up. They said, where are you going? I said, show me where the bathroom is. I got there. I took the hospital dress away. I put my clothes. Acts chapter 3 said, lifting, lifting, jumping, and praising God. So I said, mm, hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Read your Bible, Acts chapter 3. I call a taxi. I entered. People who came to, who heard that I was in the hospital lying down, made my bed empty. I'm telling you my life story. I know that spirit. I got home, the pain was still there, but I heard you are healed. When it was five o'clock service time, I carried my Bible. I began to preach in the church. And people who heard that I was in hospital, who left church to go and look for me, we are told I'm preaching in the church. They came back to the church to meet me preaching. They said, well, we were told you, you had broken bones in templates. I said, yes, I'll be healed. Many today did not believe I had broken bones in templates. 30 years later, I'm standing. His bone was not broken. What is the truth? Did you have broken bone or not? I had. I didn't have now. Was the doctor correct that my bones were broken? Yes. Did I believe it? Yes. But what did God say? You are healed. I'm not sure you are hearing me. It's not a lie when you are well and you say you are well. It's not also a lie when you are sick and you say I'm healed. For by his stripes we are healed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Caleb, my servant. <coughs> this is my belief. I believe that when they got to that land, the eye of the other ten saw zigzagly. But Caleb really looked the way David looked at Goliath. He said, are you sure you are 12 feet? Because you are tall, but God is the most high. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Goliath was tall, but God was taller than him. So David said, this day the Lord will put your head in my hand. I never exceeded that day when Goliath fell to his hand. <coughs> Another spirit. How do you look at things when they look bad? How do you look at things when they look horrible? What do you say when everybody says things are bad? Daniel chapter 6. Bishop Reed. On the 4th of January this year, I turned 40 years old in the ministry. Not yet Ora Robot. Ora Robot have just started. So I have 20 years to start. Look at Daniel chapter 5. You are going to hear strange things in the Bible tonight, Colin. <laughs> Daniel chapter 5, verse 7. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. 
Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was Bethesda greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Look at verse 10. Now, say that to everybody. Now. Please talk back to me. No. Please talk louder. No. Kings, wise men, astrologers, soothsayers have no answer. Look at the word again. Now, the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lord, came into the banquet house. And the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Is she wise? No, she's not called a wise woman. But she has a different spirit. In other words, excuse me, Bishop Reed, what did I hear you are doing? Sad? No need. Change. Well, why are you sad? What I saw is terrible. What they told me is terrible. Here is a woman, no title in the world of experience and astrology and soothsaying. But she has mouth better than soothsayers. <laughs> That's what I'm after. She had a different attitude. Look at verse 11. Read it very well with me, loudly. One, two, go. <laughs> and in the days of thy father, Light and understanding, wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, the king, I say thy father, made master of the magician, astrologers, chardians, and soothsayers. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This man Daniel was master over magician. Magicians were doing all. If you read Exodus chapter 3, you see the work of magician. Exodus chapter 4, magician. Exodus chapter 5, magician. Exodus chapter 6, magician. Exodus chapter 7, magician. Exodus chapter 8, magician. In Exodus 9, the Bible says, when boils, B-O-I-L-S, You didn't hear that. The Bible used the word, they could no more contest with Moses when their bodies were filled with boils and Moses' body was smooth. Is anybody hearing me tonight? Here is a woman, Dr. Ruth, who said to the king, verse 10, excuse me, what did I hear is happening to you? May you live forever. However, there is a man in thy kingdom. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Not men, a man. In your kingdom, who helped your father before he died? He is still alive. The spirit of holy gods are upon him. He's a wise man. He's a man full of the Holy Ghost. Hear me? He's a master over magicians. Did you hear that? Yes, Look at verse 12. For as much as an excellent spirit. And knowledge. 
and understanding and interpretation and dream interpreting and showing of hard sentences. The next line. And the spirit of dissolving doubts. Stand up. Come on. Follow me, Dr. Colin. Can you see us wherever you are? All right. Close your eyes. Be talking. Everything I say, you say is a lie. You are blind. That's a lie. You are deaf. That's a lie. You can't see. You, I can't. you cannot see. That's a, that's a lie. <laughs> I can't. That's a lie. You are not tall. That's a lie. <laughs> you are very weak. That's a lie. You came from England. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Hear me? Everything you ever said to Daniel that was negative, he told you it's a lie. He has the spirit of dissolving doubt. It's not that if I say you are a very poor man. That's a lie. All of you here, you are very poor. That's a lie. All of you are sick. That's a lie. All of you are blind. That's a lie. Especially you, the black people. Mostly the white ones. It is my prayer, Dr. Colin Oka, that the day we come, no matter how naturally true it is, what you don't want, use your spirit to condemn it. Come here, you man with neck problem. Take your seat, everybody. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. church I saw you when they were asking for yellow cards you raise your hand true or false true now lose your bandage 
Did you come to be healed? Take the bandage off. Turn your neck to the left hand side. Turn it to your right. Turn your neck to the back. Now turn it to the front. Keep it straight. Keep your neck straight from where it was. Straight. How do you want it to be? Keep it at the way you want it to be. Keep your neck the way you want it to be. Give me your hand, give me your neck band. Can you run to your seat? My question, can you run to your seat? Turn your head here. Turn your head there. By his stripes, you are healed. And by the authority of the word of God, be healed. Amen. Now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go to your seat. Leave it. <laughs> Everybody look at me. It doesn't matter how long his neck has been there. When I came in and sat, my eyes went there direct. And when Bishop Reed asked who didn't receive yellow card, his hand was only hand I saw for hand, and the Lord said I healed him. I'm not sure you are hearing what I'm saying. that this band can do that the blood of Jesus has not finished. Hallelujah. For you to believe in this than the blood of Jesus is a misinterpretation. Yes, this wedge your neck, but Christ healed your neck. Yes. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Amen. This is a wedge so that the neck will not go from the place they want it to be. But the hand of God is behind this bandage. The hand of God is stronger than this bandage. Yeah. And unless he believes that this hand bandage is not as strong as the blood of Jesus, he will be sick. But if he say with his own mouth, if God say I'm healed, I'm healed, then he's healed. Yeah. But if he says, doctor have not seen it, he will not be well. Until he believed as well. Daniel was not only a man who said, if you throw me to a lion den, I will come out. Before he was thrown in, he knew he was not going to be eaten by lion. Now, if I give you a big dog, you are going to run. <coughs> not, not lion, I'm saying. You man, but by what you are hearing now, you wouldn't run. No. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now you have the gift of dissolving doubt now. Did you hear me? Yes. All right. If I bring Bishop Rick's dog <laughs> to say hello to you, <laughs> except by what you have heard now, what is the gift we are talking about tonight? My eyes says I'm sick. My spirit says I'm well. What my spirit says is stronger than what my eyes see. Is anybody hearing me? Yes. You said to Daniel, I'm not well. He said, it's not true. You are well. He said, look at my head. He said, I can't see. You say, I'm talking on my head. No. He had the gift. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. Of dissolving no matter what doubt you gave him. Colin, I didn't know the gift of dissolving doubt was in the Bible. If anybody come to my house in Nigeria and say, Papa, Papa, my mother died. I say, congratulations. <laughs> they say, you didn't hear what I said. I said, I heard. They say, my mother, I just lost my mother. <laughs> I said, congratulations. They say, why? Were you waiting for your mother to bury you? They say, no. Won't it be an, an honor for you to bury your mom? Yes, sir. Clean your face. 
so I can pray for you. Then they clean their face. I say, go, I'm not praying. Why? Because your mother has gone for glory. Oh, all right, sir. Thank you very much. I'm going back home. <laughs> so put it, I say, oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. You really love your mom. Oh, God. I'm sorry about that. What are we going to do next? I have increased your doubt and your fear. But when I say congratulations, you say, what for? Thank God your mom died, not you. <laughs> I've seen some people rush to me and say, I just lost my job. I said, because your pay was too small. the gift of dissolving doubt and doubt will never knock at your door. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Collins, it's not a priest telling the king whom Daniel is. It's his wife. The wife is telling him in your town, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In your kingdom, say hallelujah. hallelujah. There's a man in your kingdom. He has excellent spirit. Say with me, I have excellent spirit. I have excellent spirit. To dissolve my doubts. To He has the gift of interpreting hard sentences. Let me give you one example of the hard sentences. They came to say, Daniel, are you aware of what they are saying about you in town? He said, what? The king is going to throw you to lion's den. Daniel said, I'm the first to go and come back. For you to hear, you are going to lie on den. That's a hard sentence. But for you to say, when I get there and come back tomorrow morning. Did anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Traditional religion says, don't tell lie when you are sick. Say you are sick. Amen. Belief says, let the sick say I'm healed. Amen. You didn't hear that? Let the band say, I'm loose. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Another evidence of dissolving doubts. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abed Negro. <laughs> the only African among the three people. One British, one American, and one African. <laughs> it was a bad Negro that said, if you throw us to the fire, we will come out. Yes. Amen. The Shadrach said, it's true. Yes. The Bishop said, very true. Yes. They tied them. They said, but you are not aware the fire had been hit seven times more than before. They said, the higher the smoke, the cooler the oven. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Maybe you left home. Oh, Bishop Reed is going to pray for me tonight. Yes, they've asked the Archbishop to come. If what I'm saying now cannot heal you, laying of hand cannot heal you. How many of you came that we are sick? Stand. If you were sick when you came, stand. Is that the English word? Is that an English word? If you were sick when you left home, stand. Now get up and come here, walk around and go back to your seat. As you are coming, the Lord is healing you. And as you are going back, you are well. 
for by his stripes you are healed. In the name of Jesus, rise and be healed. Amen. Go back to your seat. You are healed. Check your body when you get home. The trace of your disease is dissolved. Somebody ought to join me to say amen. amen. Have I prayed for you? Yes. Whether I lay hand or I pronounce it, you are healed. Somebody who knows you see it jump up among you. God bless you. God bless you. Begin to go. You'll be stronger. You'll be, you are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. I say you are healed. Amen. Everybody get up, say I'm healed. I'm healed. I say everybody get up. I didn't say some of you get up. Everybody get up, say I'm healed. I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm, I'm healed. Now look at me seriously. How would you have felt, Dr. Collins, before you and I read in this book, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we are told the fire we are going to be thrown in. Three of us, come up. Now you be our informant. Come and tell us what the king has done. What he's going to do to the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to bind you. He's going to bind you, he's going to tie you, and he's going to throw you into the furnace. <laughs> now, supposing the leader of the three ran away and say, I don't believe in God anymore. <laughs> what do you think the other two would have done? They run. I don't believe that three people spoke at the same time. One said on behalf of the rest. Even if we are thrown in, we will still not bow. Right. You know what the other two said? Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? Amen. One of us among us must have the gift of saying no to what the enemy suggests. Right. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. The first thing I told this man 13 years ago, you are misunderstood. Don't misunderstand yourself. Are you hearing me? Then he asked me to come to this church. The pulpit was there. There were about 80 or 65 people. They cleared the whole seats and began to dance. And for two and a half hours, they were dancing and jumping and praising God. I said, I thought people were crazy in Africa, but there are mad people here in England. <laughs> For two and a half hours, he was the praise worship leader. No choir, nothing. Everything was set aside in this church. When this church began, there was no time to pray for the sick. They danced until they forgot they were sick. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the Bible, say with me, Bible. Bible. There was no day set aside for healing. Any day sickness caught you by mistake, you are healed by right. Amen. You didn't hear me. Amen. Read from Matthew to Revelation. There was no day say four days time. There shall be a healing service. When in the Bible you are in this church and you are sick, the next person to you just say you are healed. That is the gift I brought to Penel this week. Let no man standing by you sick, go sick. Don't wait for the bishop to say all the sick come out. No! If you are sitting near someone, you hear him snoring <laughs> while the message is going on. Deliver him from the gift of death. <laughs> Don't wait. Because it's not every day God may tell this man to pray. But it's every day that God heals. Excellence 
spirit, come, four of you come. Now, for you to hear that the gift of interpreting her sentences is a gift. He has it. What should you say to yourself tomorrow when somebody comes and say your car is stolen? What will you say? Let me hear you say, it shall be found. I'm getting a better one. <laughs> did you hear what he said? What did I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Somebody needed it. But God is going to give me a better one. Yeah. But for a testimony, that one shall be found. Amen. You didn't hear what I'm saying. Amen. Someone took it by mistake. They will bring it by right. Amen. Twice in my city, we were in convention one year. My wife asked the driver to go and buy bread with Daisy, the junior one, to root. Thieves asked them to come out of the car and they drove it away. In my city, when they got home, they opened the locker to see if there was money and they saw my picture. They brought the car, they drove it near my house and put the key on top. <laughs> when the driver and Daisy came and said, Daisy was shaking, they asked me to come out. They took the car. I said they will bring it soon. <laughs> the same evening, the same evening, they drove the car near our gate and put the key on top and went by foot. Hallelujah. <laughs> Less than one year, Dr. Ronchai and four men 
We had gone to another town to give them the poster of my crusade in the town. On the way, highway men, I don't know what you call them here, but highway robbers, <laughs> stopped their car at gunpoint, asked them to come down, four of them lie down, they entered the car, drove it away. When they got three miles, they entered a little lane to find out what was in the car. They opened the trunk and saw my crusade pictures. They, they put the team back, lock it, and began to look for whom they took the key from. <laughs> they drove and met them and said, we are sorry, we didn't know it belonged to it. I was like, here you are with the key. Oh, <laughs> that God has not changed. Yes. What belongs to you, the enemy shall not desire it. Yes. And if they take it by mistake, call it back in the name of Jesus. Yes. Don't sing. The Lord gave, the Lord took. Ne ne God never took. For God so loved, he gave. Yes. You never hear God so hate, he took. <laughs> Am I making sense to you? Yes. I know you left home. Oh, when he finished tonight, he's going to call me to put hand on me. If was I say, Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word. Are you hearing me? Yes. His word went forth and healed them. Yes. What I'm saying to you now from God, Amen. you are healed in the name of Jesus. Yes. Several times we've seen that happen at home. Several times. I was in America in November. My secretary, Mabel, they took her car when she went to buy something. She came home with taxi. I said, when do you want the car back? She said, they took it. I said, they didn't take it. They will bring it back. I said, give me your hand. I took her hand. In Washington, we call this car back in Jesus' name. She said, amen. But when she left, she went to tell police. And she went to tell the insurance company. I said, maybe, where did you go? I've been looking for you for the last one hour. Did I not pray for you? He said, yes. I said, but the car will be found. She said, no, I want the to give me another one. I said, you shouldn't have said amen to my prayer. Because if you said amen, the car will be found. She said, what should I do? I said, call the insurance company and tell them that the archbishop said you'll find your car. <laughs> Thirty minutes later, the car was found. God is the same anywhere. Yes. I said, God is the same anywhere. Yes. Don't be so used to the system of this is how it was done. Unless you fall, you are not healed. Unless they lay hand on you, you are not healed. Many people in the Bible, when Peter passed, who were laying, dying, they say, who just passed? They say, it's Peter. They say, oh, I'm healed. By the shadow of Peter, not by the hand of Peter. Hallelujah. Many were healed. Amen. How did it happen? They believe that if Peter passed that way, they shall be healed. Amen. You left home this evening, Believing that when you get here, you'll be healed. It is me or Reed or calling or Peter you were coming to see. Now I'm telling you, you don't need to pay for your injection. It has been cured. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Did you hear that? Yes. I dissolve your doubt. Amen. I command your doubt to leave you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. The queen said, Daniel had that gift. The Bible said, Then what Daniel brought before the king. Verse 14. The king said, I have heard of thee, that the spirit of God in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Hear this. The gift of wise men, the gift of interpreting dreams is found in thee. Then the king said, the gift also that dissolves doubts 
verse 16, is found in D. If you can read the writing, interpret it for me. Daniel answered in verse 17, let your gift be for yourself and those who don't know God. I will read the interpretation. Are you here tonight? I came to take you to a new level. Don't wait for healing line before you are healed. If you don't know how you feel, you feel nothing. I hear people say, I don't know how I feel. Because you don't feel anything. Anybody who have a feeling should know. Nobody should tell me you are not well when I know I'm well. You think it's everything that prophet says that you have to go by. Go and read the book of First Samuel chapter 1. Verse 11 said, in verse 9, Then prophet Eli said, Anna, come here. Why are you so drunk at 9 o'clock this morning? <laughs> prophet Eli said, you are drunk by 9 o'clock. Verse 10, 1 Samuel 1. Hannah answered and said, no. I have a problem that I want God to solve. Verse 11, for my soul is vexed. And I'm pouring my soul. Read it for me, Pastor. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11. I am pouring my soul before God. I'm not drunk this morning. Verse 12. Then said the prophet, then said the prophet, the Lord granted thy petition. Supposing when the prophet said, a prophet as high as Eli, you are drunk. And she began to vomit. Yeah. <laughs> she would have been drunk. But she said, I'm not drunk. What's in your Bible, Pastor? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. 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 Read me verse 9 and 10. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in silence. Yes. Yes. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Read the next verse. And she vowed a vow and said, Who did she tell when she had trouble? God. God. Did she tell Eli? No, was she in the church? Yes. She was in the church. But did she tell her problem to the pastor in the church? No. no. Look at your Bible, please. Start from verse 7. And as he did so year by year, when she went up, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not, and why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved. And Eli said unto her, How long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And uh, Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. To who? To God. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Who is to grant your petition? God. When you are in trouble, who are you to tell? God. We must go back to the Bible. To come to the house of God means you have resolved God is my final solution. Yes, yes or no? Yes. Whether you are prayed for or not, your belief shall make you whole. Amen. Take your seat.
When will you want your problem to be solved? Now. I didn't know you said had one. <laughs> when will you want your problem to be solved? Now. There are two answers. There are two answers, and both of them are right. When would you want your sickness to go? It's gone. Who wants his own to go now? Who believes it's gone? How many of you would like to have the attitude of it's over? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you wait until the prophet, the apostle, the superior special healer come to you, you may not be healed. But if you believe before you leave home, you shall be healed. Are you hearing me? Yes. If you're in a wheelchair and you start to stand before prayer is said, the spirit that told you to stand is stronger than when you wait for prayer to be said. Did you hear me? If you believe you are well, Nothing can make you sick. Yes, the symptom may be there. Yes, the pain may be there. But your spirit is stronger than your flesh. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes. It's not psychology. It's not therapy. It's faith and confidence in God. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is in you. Than he that is in the world. Amen. When I rose from that bed in the hospital, the first scripture that came to me was Acts chapter 3. And the lame man for 30 years was limping and jumping and praising God. I asked myself, what does limping mean? He's about to get well. That was my interpretation. Oh, he's already said, I don't want to be on the same spot. I'm going home healed. As he improved and began to go, Bishop Reed, I've seen people that I tell, get up as crippled. They get up and fall. As they continue to fall, until you are no more able to fall. And when they fall the second time, sometimes the third time, they don't fall anymore. There are some I just said, rise and walk. Before I finish saying it, they get up. No matter how many times it is repeated, healing is only once. Once, once the root cause is killed, the leaves will wither. Am I making sense to you? Yes. I don't know in England, but in Africa, trees are of different strength. There are some trees you cut down. A day, two, three. The leaves still look as if they are not dead. Come back a week's time. It has dried up. There are some sicknesses that look as if they are not healed. Take your eye from it and you are healed. Amen. Did you hear me? Yes. Confess what you expect. And what you expect will be respected by God. Chapter 6, verse 3, Daniel. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm here for the first time this year to give you another spirit. Amen. An excellent spirit. Yes. The spirit that says, I will no more talk the way the world talks. Because I fly so much, every time I hear the pilot or the air hostess say, fasting your seat belt, I fasten my faith belt. I've never seen any man saved by seat belt. 
I've seen people say it by faith bell. When you rebuke the spirit of death, you save yourself from disaster. And this year is a year of unusual miracle. God sent me to tell you, dissolve your doubts and your doubts shall not possess you. From this day, have an excellent spirit. What is that spirit? What God has said will come to pass. What is an excellent spirit? I am looking for a job, I will get one. For an applicant. What's an excellent spirit? I'm a barren woman, said by others, but I know I'm a mother of children. That's an excellent spirit. What is an excellent spirit? By his stripes, I have been healed. What's an excellent spirit? I have no money in my pocket, but God is going to provide. That's an excellent spirit. The spirit of doubt says, God has not done it before. He doesn't have power to do it, and I know he cannot do it. A believing spirit says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Is that all right? Yeah. How many of you would like to exercise the gift of praying for one another from today? How many of you would like to exercise or put to use the gift of praying for one another from today? Those of you who believe what I have said, stand up, pray for somebody who is sitting down. Did you hear that? Pray for somebody. It is special belief that makes people special. Come on there. Brother John. What? Joe. More than 10 years now, almost, almost 10 years. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Joe, you are going to die tomorrow, you know that? No, no, no. <laughs> Supposing he said, surely... What do you think will happen to him tomorrow? He'll be dead. But now that he said no, you think he's going to die tomorrow? No. Joe, are you dying tomorrow? No. Why? Because I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to offend your wife. How old are you? I'm a year older than last year. He's one year older than last year. <laughs> How old is this man? Say what he said. How old is he? One year older than last year. How old will he be next year? One year older than next year. How old will he be two years' time? Three years older than next year. <laughs> <laughs> you think he has written application to death? Everybody said no. May I say the last word before I close in prayer? Don't write application to problem with your mouth. Say no to sickness. Say no to poverty. Say no to trouble. And say yes to God. And I hear you say amen. Amen. Everyone around you may have a different concept, but this, my servant, has another spirit. Did you hear that? This, my servant, that's the word of God. 
has another spirit. And what kind of spirit? I'm well. I'm alive. I'm alive. When Bishop Reed arrived beneath, tens of thousands shout the word, I'm alive! I'm alive! That's his name in Africa. They don't know his name to be Bishop Reed. <laughs> One year, he came to Nigeria. I introduced him and he came and said, I'm alive! Every subsequent year he has come, his name is I'm alive. And I believe I'm alive is better than I'm not well. Do you hear me? Yes. If I were you, I would say I'm alive. I'm alive. If I were you, when somebody says, how old are you? Next time, what will you say? I say, if they ask you, how old are you? What will you say? I'm a year older than when? Last year. The Bible said, by the confession of your mouth, be it unto you as thou hast believed. I'm getting tired that people have to set a day to fast or pray to be well. It is not fasting that we get the glory. It's Jesus. Fasting didn't die for you at the cross. Jesus died. The Bible did not say fasting took away your sin and fasting healed your body. Fast if you want to fast, but fast fast. <laughs> and believe quickly. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idaosa's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached, it was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then, sometime later, we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. I'm getting there. I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the 
uh, advanced team to go and paste posters all over Odisha. And we went to put posters all over Odisha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin uh, my class Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Hose university all those and well he's he's a man we can't we can't forget he was a great example to us and i thank god it's particularly good for us whites british because in britain uh people are rather skeptical these days You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis we went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 sitter plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy sure Dausa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said, God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. 
Now this where the testimony is. When my daughter was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Bini? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ibnidion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Eboho, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Cerullo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives.
Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's up? What's up? What's up? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, wait till I talk! Again! Again, again! Pastor, Pastor. Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can't do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fact why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate, and he said, "Oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it." I said, "How? How are you going to do it?" And he said, "Okay, go out if you don't want to see see me do it." But you know. As a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, be healed. After he prayed, he asked me, what is the name of the child? What did you get name? I said it's Inwarata. 
I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, convulsion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father convinced my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the in, uh, ordinary native daughter tried they can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! That is how I'm living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about nine o'clock sneezed. <laughs> <laughs> and that made bed to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wolf, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Did you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand I couldn't wait. And I ran out. With him to the mother. He said, Please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, What is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said mm, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, 
let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls, and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. He no mega jere, he no mega ta, he jesu me go wese, he no mega ta go wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard session, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938 to a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
He later took correspondence calls from Britain and the United States while working in Bathershoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akpos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, Young Benson, Young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastor churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971 a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the world faith college new orleans and a doctor of law degree from ora robert university in march 1984 he also received another degree he's also received other degrees from the international university in Brussels, belgium archbishop benson and his wife margaret idaosa were blessed with four children Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world crusade played a major role in his ministry he was involved at least one crusade per month a record crowd of nearly 1 million people a night attended his lagos crusade in april 1985 he established the redemption television ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people what leading gospel minister said about our bishop idaosa according to mrs gordon frada lisa president of christ for the nation incorporated dallas texas usa i know of no young black in all africa who is preaching who is reaching million as benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates his demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. Idaosa rose from the rank of an ordinary man to award leaders leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. Idaosa also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Idaosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. Now I'm going to 
talk about his early ministry again as a youth he got converted to christianity by a certain pastor at ball and joined in the flagging congregation as one of the first members he was very active and converted many to christianity after experiencing a revelation from god calling him into ministry he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Benson Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world and I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord I am honored to be a part of his anointing a part of his of his ministry I want to ask you please make sure you share these videos this video this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful powerful humble great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him I, and I'll say it again I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to our bishop Bensi in the house the Lord bless you.